Hey Micah, hope you're doing well. Uh, just wanted to say thanks again for the tripod. I appreciate that and as promised I'm just going to make some tutorial videos for you. Um, if you are not Micah and you're watching this, we've been having a, a conversation about synthesizer features and functions and I just wanted to share some things uh, based on modular synthesis but the principles can kind of be used for a lot of different things. So I want to use modular synthesis to start with the basics and kind of play around and see what we can find out um, and also uh, see how we can apply that to more complex setups. So I highly recommend, if you don't have it, getting VCV Rack. Um, that is a free software uh, modular system for iOS, excuse me, for Mac and PC. And on iOS, it's an app called MiRack. Um, which is absolutely brilliant. So it's free for Mac and PC, it's $10 for iOS, and it's just great. Um, that's what we're going to be using as a baseline in these videos. So what I want to do with this first video is just get set up and running with uh, MiRack on uh, iOS. And what I'm going to do is set up a patch and set up MIDI control for that so we can drive around it with our hands. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to just modify this as needed for your own setups. So what I want to do is create a patch and then that opens up a blank rack with an audio out. Um, I like to have my stuff organized from left to right so I can at a glance see what my signal flow is. So I drag my audio to be the rightmost object. Um, what I want to do is start with uh, something simple. We're just going to use one module um, that is a complete synth voice and as we explore that uh, we can start to rebuild that with individual modules and bust it out into a big rack um, as we get a better understanding of what we're doing. So let's go look for that now. We got our rack open, we got our audio out. I'm going to uh, go over to my menu and switch to tags um, and what we're going to use is a module called the Valley Interzone and this is what's called a synth voice um, so I'm going to grab synth voices and Interzone and add it to my rack and pull it over here and zoom in so Interzone is a complete synth voice, which means it has all the individual components that you need to make a sound that you can work with um, without having to use multiple modules. So it's, it's a nice easy place to start. It sounds amazing. It's one of my favorite modules in MiRack. This is an emulation of the IntelliGel Atlantis, uh, which is fantastic if you can afford hardware um, and if you if you can you may still want this to, to be portable um, and if you've been looking for an SH-101 uh, for your iPad well here you go the enter zone is really it so this is going to be the one module we're working with and in order to control it I'm going to add uh, MIDI control to the rack so I'm going to add one more over here pardon my calluses and in my tags, I'm going up to MIDI. And since I'm just using one device to control um, the synth, I'm just going to do MIDI 1. So here's my MIDI control. And what I'm doing, I don't think I showed this yet, I'm using the Archuria Minilab Mark II, um, which has basically 14 usable encoders. It's got two menu diving knobs. And it's a two octave keyboard, so it's it's a really nice mix with this. Um, it's quite quite good to work with. So let's get this zoomed out pretty well. Okay, so to get this to where we can use it, we're gonna set up the MIDI keyboard to control Enter Zone. Uh, all of these inputs and outputs are labeled using analog modular terminology, and we'll just stick with that for the purposes of flow. Um, just remembering, of course, that this is a virtual environment, not really modular. So CV means control voltage. We're going to take out CV control voltage from my keyboard into the volt per octave input on the synth module. So that means the keyboard is now going to tell the synth 
uh, at what volt per octave setting we are. So there's 12 volts per octave, and because on a piano keyboard there's 12 tones per octave, you can, you can slice and dice smaller than that if you want to, but as far as basics go, that's it. Um, I do want to make sure that it knows to look for my mini lab, so I'm just going to select that. So that mini lab selected, I'm just running all channels, and control volt to the volt per octave. Now, if you think of, you, you see one that says gate, and you see gate over here as well. Um, so if you think of a gate as something that would open to let sound out, we need to not only tell the synth what note to play, but we need to tell it to let that sound out so we can hear it. So I'm going to take my gate control from the keyboard and put that into my envelope gate control. We'll be talking about all these in more detail later. So I've got gate to envelope. And start I want to use and send that to trig. So trigger will trigger the gate to open. Um, and the start uh, causes that trigger to happen. My first patch in this, I didn't use that connection, and I thought that there was something messed up with my keyboard when it wasn't. So thankfully, that's the solution. So before we run sound out, um, you can see this arrow is pointing down to envelope, which is what we want. Um, so that means the envelope is active, we can shape the sound, and the gate will allow the sound that's been shaped by that envelope out into the world. So VCA means uh, voltage controlled amplifier, so that's where your sound comes from. We have left and right, so I am going to hook this up. Note there's no sound because I haven't pressed any keys yet. And here's a little tip for this software. Unlike hardware, you would need multiple outputs to run those because you can't stick two plugs in one jack unless you've got stacking plugs. In the software, you can run multiple outputs uh, to multiple destinations. But once you've done one, it's kind of tricky. So I would go backwards on the second one. Now I've got left and right output from the VCA. And going left to right in the flow, we have our MIDI controller sending control voltage, uh, sending gate to open it up, sending start to trigger the gate to open, and then the VCA sending sound out to the world. I'm going to just press a key, and that's super loud and noisy, so I'm going to take that down. So now we have a nice pure tone, um, and we're, we're going to go through all of this in detail, but uh, as far as setup goes, uh, you can test to see that you've got your gates wide, wide open by leaving your sustain all the way up, and you can select one of these. Um, oscillator sounds, so sawtooth in this case, which is really harsh, so I'm going to switch over to a square. A little bit different sounding. Okay, so now we've got sound. Our keyboard is working. Um, since my keyboard has knobs on it, and yours may as well, uh, we may want to have some more control. So what I'm going to do to get that control is press the learn button up here. And notice how everything turns red. So whatever's outlined in red can now be programmed uh, to work with my controller. So typically speaking, uh, the most important things you're going to want to control are your filter and your envelope. And I'll show you why in a second. So what I'm going to do is take my filter. This is my frequency. I'm going to press that and then press learn. And you can't see it, but below I'm going to select a knob that I want to map it to, and I'm just going to turn it. So now I'm turning the knob on my keyboard, and the slider works. So in addition to frequency, you want to get resonance. So I'm going to grab that, hit learn, and turn the knob that I want to use for resonance. So now I have frequency and resonance, and importantly, I can control both at the same time, which is really cool. Um, I don't really mess with the high-pass filter much, so I'm not going to map that one. Um, however, what I will do is grab, let's see, I want to keep things logical here. I'm going to grab my LFO rate and hit learn and use my next knob. And now I've got LFO rate. 
And on my keyboard, I've got three knobs right below that. So I'm going to map these three to those. So I will have learn. And here's my envelope knob. Learn. Now I got my LFO knob. Learn. And now I got my Volt per octave knob. And I'm just laying this out as it is on my hardware. So yours may be different. You may want to control different things. I like to have envelope control, so I'm going to map out these four. So select a control, hit learn, twist a knob, and there it is. I'm going to select the next one, same thing. And keep going, same thing. Keep going, same thing. And I want to have some control over these guys up here too. So what I'm going to do is control my wave mixer so I've got my saw so now I've got that square tooth or square tooth square wave um, that's one and two oops I did that wrong so if I put the wrong knob on I can just hit that again and I can unmap it and now there's no control I can hit learn again and go back and put the right one on and I want sub as well I'm going to learn that, and then I like to control my noise as well. All right, so that's my 14 knobs all mapped out. Everything that's green has been programmed to match something, and I can turn multiple things and do all kinds of crazy stuff. So good times ensue. Now, to turn all that off so you don't actually program anything else, just hit learn again, and there you are. All right, so while we were twisting knobs, we were changing settings and you may or may not want the settings to be the the same as we just did so a good starting point always is to have your uh, envelope well let's go left to right so have your frequency all the way open so it lets everything through so that's your filter frequency on your envelope have your sustain all the way open so it lets all the sound through and then select a waveform up top. I'm just going to grab my square wave again and now everything should give us sound. So uh, what we're going to do from here forward is just go through the functionality of all the different parts of this and you can get some really really wonderful sounds. Uh, so it's there's a lot, a lot you can do. Um, while you're waiting for that video I, I encourage you to experiment with your setup and just play with things and see what they do uh, and have a good time and we will break it down and have a good time with it together uh, in the next video so from here what I want to do is just a deep dive into the features with a focus on their functionality and how you can actually use them uh, what they mean and how they go together and Ultimately, long term, what I'd really like to do is take this inner zone module and bust it out into all the individual modules that uh, make it up so we can have an understanding of how we could build our own or our own version of that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, so, Micah, this is really for you and uh, anybody else that's watching. Um, I would like for this to be a, a dialogue as much as possible. So if there's something that you would like to see, or something that you don't understand, or something that you want to correct me on. I'm all ears. Uh, it's all good fun, so um, keep them coming. All right, thanks, and have a great one. We'll send you off with a little bit of a noodle so you can see what this thing does. Yeah, 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 yeah
Catch up with you later.